Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator, and this is episode 93, You Are What You Eat. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast, the podcast where we focus on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness to grow closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. Guys, if you are a returning viewer or listener, thank you very much for being here. Uh, your support's been incredible. We just hit 6,000 total downloads or listens on uh, Spotify, Anchor, Amazon, all the listening platforms. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. That's that's awesome. Uh, it's a huge milestone in this 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 journey. Uh, if you're a brand new listener, welcome to the to the party. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, this podcast, you don't have to uh, listen in chronological order. Generally speaking, there's a few like part one and part twos here and there, but it's not like you have to you know binge watch the whole thing, which you can if you want. Um, but you can just kind of pop in anywhere, any kind of title that trips your trigger, tune in, let me know how you're doing. If you guys, any of you guys across the board, let me know how you're doing down in the comments, in the description or whatever you got going on, wherever platform you're listening on, just let me know what's going on. How can I pray for you this week? I, that's uh, going to be my new thing. Um, I encourage each one of you, anytime somebody's going through any kind of, Hey, I just need some prayers instead of just saying prayers up or praying for you, thoughts, anything like that, actually write out, take the time to write out a prayer for that person, put some thought into it. I think that's going to go a lot farther than just, you know, prayers up and then you forgetting about it. All right. So that's my challenge to you guys. Check out the Three Pillars website, Three Pillars podcast at wordpress.com uh, for all things Three Pillars, the workouts of the day, uh, quotes of the day, um, the podcast, obviously the blog, um, got a podcast player on there and i'll actually also link you to good pods there's also a link in the description below uh, good pods is an app that allows uh podcasters like me to get discovered by people who probably would never even hear of me uh, because of that particular platform so that's pretty neat uh to go check us out on good pods give a rating give a review uh we're, at, we're in the top 100 now on that on that platform number top 10 spots on a lot of places actually top five in a lot of places too so uh, please check us out uh, on good pods so tonight we're going to be talking a little bit more about the physical pillar uh you are what you eat kind of falls into the fitness category um the physical fitness category of these spiritual mental and physical uh aspects so we're going to dive into that got a little article we're going to go over i'm going to hit some biblical uh themes biblical verses to kind of help you uh process all that and then we're going to go from there. So as always, we're going to start with a quick word of prayer. Then we're going to dive right in. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We are in awe by you. Every waking moment we dedicate to you and we owe it to you. And Lord, we are grateful. Lord, anybody listening to this, bless them. Give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that can grow them closer to you, Lord. Lord, give me the strength, the wisdom to deliver your message. Use me today to help bring somebody closer to you and to live a longer, healthier life. Because the longer we're here on earth, the healthier we are, the more people we can bring to your fold, Lord. So bless, bless them with the tools and resources. Give me the words to say. And we will just grow closer to you every single day. Lord, in your most holy name, amen. All right, so you are what you eat. You guys have heard that probably at least once in your life, right? It's it's true. Uh, now, <laughs> my mom used to say that I would turn into a peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> if any of you know me, you know that that may or may not actually be true. I am not a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I ate uh thousands growing up <laughs> what when i was younger it was just my thing it was a comfort food for me uh little did i know that looking at it now that's all sugar now as a kid you know i run around burning up a lot of energy and stuff like that it, it had its place in my macro count right but as an as an adult can't be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day every day like i used to fun fact when i was in boot camp um, I was ordered to eat two with every meal because I was losing weight at the cyclic, uh, because it was hot. I was sweating. I wasn't having empty calories and I was really working out really hard because that's just what you do in boot camp. 
I, I lost like, I think it went in about 190, came out about 170, still eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But I did the math and conservatively speaking, I ate over 400 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the, the 13 weeks I was in Paris Island. So uh, probably not the best day for me, but that's, that's what they told me to do. So I did it. Now, <laughs> I am not a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, as you, as you can see. Um, so I guess I just debunked the you are what you eat uh, phrase. However, that's my little joke, my little icebreaker for the, the evening. Um, you have to be conscious of what you're putting in your body uh, when it comes to your, your diet. I've got an article here from, let's see, 20, I want to say it was like 2016. And it's Why Nutrition Matters. It's from hospitalnews.com. I'm not going to read the whole article, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase a little bit of it. Um, yeah, I want to say this one. I just want to make sure I get it. I'll, I'll link it in the in the description box so you guys can check it out. But I do want to say this is from like 2016. Anywho, <clears throat> you know that excess sugar can lead to type 2 diabetes. We should probably all know that by now. A little treat here and there, not going to hurt you, but these things in abundance are, are no bueno. Junk food, cotton candy, <laughs> fried food, a uh, lot of soda, uh, baked goods, all these things. There, there are a lot of them are just empty calories. All right. Um, you have to be cognizant of that. If you've got birthday parties or things like that, eat the cupcake. All right. I'm going to tell you that right now. Caveat to that, you have to live an active lifestyle too. This episode is going to focus mostly on the nutritional part of it. We've done a lot of things on fitness and activity and ways to keep your keep yourself engaged and things like that. Um, but this is going to focus mostly on the nutrition. So in the back of your head, know that you are living an active lifestyle. You're working out, you're drinking your water, you're keeping yourself engaged, you're staying um, overall healthy on that side of the house. Here we're gonna just, you know, talk mostly about the food part, right? So your body's like a Ferrari. You don't wanna put in the low grade sluggish. You don't wanna put diesel fuel in a Ferrari, right? This is not gonna work. <laughs> As your body's a very efficient machine. So things like your fresh vegetables, fruits, um, nuts when you can get them, whole grains. There's a lot of different diets and things like that out there. You need to eat what's gonna make you feel the best at the end of the day. Uh, my wife's been into something really neat here lately. It's eating according to your ancestry. Think about, you know, if you're Mediterranean, your ancestors ate a lot of fish. They ate a lot of, uh, not necessarily a lot of pasta, a lot of olive oil, things like that. Me, I'm Irish. I eat lots of potatoes. I feel great when I eat potatoes. <laughs> so that's just me. I don't need to eat them all the time because they'll, they'll go right to my gut. But I feel good when I eat potatoes. Um, maybe that's... That's just Tobinator science right there, but that's something to look into. I'll, maybe I'll do another episode on that later on. I'll find an article, but um, things that are, you know, high in fiber, minerals, things that you might be deficient, that's the stuff you want to put into your system. Get blood work done. See where you're deficient in, in uh, your life and see if you can supplement that, uh, or, or I guess uh, rid yourself of that deficiency through the things that you're eating. Does that make sense? Um this article, again, from Amanda Laird, uh, says the food you should eat should always make you feel your best so you can run your own business, raise a family, or care for sick or elderly loved ones. Maybe doing all these things. Disease prevention is an important reason, uh, but there's a bunch of um, immediate benefits of a healthy diet. Here's just a few you might enjoy. So the three that she lists are increased energy, better digestion, and improved sleep and mood. Uh, increased energy, that's important. Everybody wants to be uh, uh, living at optimal levels. Uh, Laird says processed junk and heavy, and heavy rich foods can slow down your digestion, leaving you tired and sluggish. And while caffeine and refined sugar might give you a blast of energy now, it will leave you with even less energy when you crash. And you will crash. So boatloads of sugar and caffeine might give you a little pick-me-up right now, but it's gonna, if you have too much at once, it can overload your system. Caffeine can also make you very acidic. Um, high acidity, uh, you have a lot of fungus growth, candida growth, that's no, no bueno for your system. You want to eat things that are your protein, complex carbohydrates at uh, each meal or a snack. Think baked sweet potatoes, roasted chicken and a salad it will give you a sustained source of energy that will last much longer without the ups and downs. Um, so that's, you know, maybe your, maybe your dinner, or maybe that's part of your, your lunch routine. You, people meal prep, you prep out your meals throughout 
maybe on Sunday or whenever you, maybe the night before, just pack yourself a little lunch for the next day. Some kind of protein, um, uh, some kind of you know green leafy vegetable and a starch, right? And again, everybody's got a little different thing. Some people, oh, I'm just gonna eat meat. I just eat steak and eggs all the time. I, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat steak and eggs. If you've got chickens, eat all the eggs possible. Eggs are like the best, one, some of the best things for you, in my opinion. Um, you're not always gonna be able to eat a steak for every meal, all right? This just is what it is. But some kind of protein, something with some fiber in it to get your, your, your bowels moving, and then something to give you a little bit of energy. So those, those, those starches, those carbohydrates. Protein for power, carbs for speed, um, the leafy stuff for your, your digestion. That's the second point, digestion. Who doesn't wanna digest your food? Because when you digest your food, you're absorbing as much of that uh, the nutrients as possible. If your digestion is very poor, you're not going to absorb as much of those nutrients and a lot of it just gets flushed down the toilet. So you're not optimizing your level of digestion. So um, she says, heartburn, constipation, gas, and bloating are all unpleasant symptoms relating to eating too much of the wrong types of food. <clears throat> Meals and snacks should leave you feeling satisfied, not overstuffed or sick to your stomach. In addition to choosing whole foods, Slowing down to eat at a table from a real plate and chewing each bite can also help alleviate digestive upset. It might help you eat less too. She's got a point, your posture when you're sitting down at the table. Some people, if you're sitting at an office chair and you're just eating a snack, if you're riding in a car down the road eating something, not the best for you. I'm kind of bad at that, I'm on the road a lot, uh, but I, like to, I also am very active otherwise. But I can work on that. I can focus on actually sitting down at a plate, chewing my food, enough time so that your the amylase in your saliva breaks it down and it's easier for your body to ingest uh, to digest rather than just take a big chunk swallowing it and hoping you feel full and next thing you know you just got stomach cramps you're gassy all this jazz we don't want all that so eating right is going to give you better digestion finally improve sleep and sleep and mood <clears throat> the sugar or caffeine high she talked about earlier is not just going to mess with your energy it can also interrupt your sleep and leave you feeling grumpy putting it very nicely, obviously. You're not gonna get a good night's rest if your body is trying to digest a day's worth of junk food or you're still on the sugar rush. If you haven't had enough sleep, you're not gonna be a ray of sunshine, she says, it's a vicious cycle. When you're feeling sluggish, you might be more inclined to reach for sugar or empty carbs. Try to drink your first cup of coffee only after you've eaten a healthy breakfast and certainly don't drink caffeinated beverages after 2 p.m. So Rogan said that uh, that last part too, don't get into your caffeine until you've been up for a little while. Like get, first thing you need to do as soon as you wake up is pound a, like 20 ounces of just good water. Get your body up, get it moving a little bit, read, do what, do what have you, then have your cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. That's, I've gotten into that habit a little bit more. I, you know, I get up about four, 4.30, Maybe by like 5.30, I've had a cup of coffee or something like that, but I try not to hit it uh, before um, I am up, up, if that makes sense. And then I don't really need anything the rest of the day because I am usually you know, all pretty pumped up from the gym. I've got work going and all that stuff. Usually doing all right. If I got a cup of coffee in the morning, maybe one a little later in the afternoon or like an energy drink or something like that, I truly try to cut back on those too. That's just me personally, full disclosure. Um, you don't want to do it too late in the day though, because um, you know it can keep you up. Your body's still trying to process all that caffeine out when you're trying to lay down and go to bed at you know, nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock, whenever you're trying to go to bed. All right, um, if you're going to have dessert, she says, it's better to have it at lunch rather than at dinner, so you're not headed to bed with elevated blood sugar. Life is busy and you can't be, afford to be weighted down or weighed down by poor food choices. Eating a healthy, eating healthy whole foods diet will help you feel great today and while preventing disease tomorrow. So again, better digestion, better nutrient absorption, the better uh, you are able to uh, fight off disease because your body's got lots of nutrients, all your blood cells and your, your white blood cells and everything are on you know, full attack mode. They're ready to go or they're in reserve and when something happens, boom, they can attack it and you're good. We know now that sugar feeds cancer. If you didn't know that, there you go. The less of this refined sugar that you guys and, and myself included, eat probably more often than we should, is not helping your situation when you come to preventing or, or you know, if you've got any kind of cancer, you know, spiritual faith and, and fitness first, get your mind right with the Lord. He can help you heal, obviously, but sugar's not helping your situation, not helping anybody. Um, everybody used to say, you know, 
uh, don't don't eat a lot of salt. But if you are active and you're sweating and stuff like that, you have to replenish your body with salt. But not like loads and loads of salt, but some kind of electrolyte, right? Um, uh, potassium being one of them, right? One of the salts. So there's a really neat picture here. And it, and it does make a lot of sense. I'm going to show it to you guys if you're watching on uh, YouTube or Rumble, Odyssey, whatever. You'll see this kind of heart with lots of colors in it. You, It is true. You really need to eat the rainbow. A variety of colors of things. You got uh, onions, broccoli, apples. Uh, it is true. An apple a day will keep the doctor away. Whatever kind of apples you want to get. Try to get in the habit of having one of those. Bananas, celery. Celery is huge. Carrots. Anything like that that you can get in. Even if you have to juice them, um, take lemons or limes, juice them, put them in your water. That way it's going to help uh, uh, help you cleanse out a lot. Um, you have to be cognizant of what you're putting in your system. Now, segue. What does the Bible say about eating healthy? Well, I've got a couple verses for you guys. First one is 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So what's the takeaway there? Your body is your temple to the most high. Do you want to corrupt the temple or do you want to have it for the glory of the Lord? Whatever you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it for the glory of the Lord. So... It's kind of like wearing that, what would Jesus do, bracelet on? Is what I'm eating bringing honor to the Most High? Am I poisoning my system? Doesn't, does, you eat or drink, you're drinking your water, things like that. You have a glass of wine or something or a beer with your friends, you're fellowshipping. We're all talking about the Lord. We're just having, again, things in moderation, right? If you're one of those who has an addictive personality, stay away from the alcohol. Entirely if necessary, Right. You, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to plan your day. You know your body better than I do. But am I drinking in excess? Is that causing harm to my system? Or am I having a glass of wine, getting some antioxidants, letting my kidneys get some, some work in? You know, there's lots of schools of thought on it. Wine's in the Bible. I'm kind of okay with it. Just don't overdo it, right? <clears throat> Next verse. Proverbs 25, 27. It is not good to eat too much honey, nor is it honorable to search out matters that are too deep. <laughs> so to eat too much honey, right? Just don't overindulge things. And if you got uh, these matters that are way too deep uh, and you're taking too much time and not spending time focused on the Lord, focused on your family, focused on your career, you know, all these things that we talk about, this balance point. If you're going too deep on things and you're overthinking and all this stuff, stay away from that too. Basically, that gets into don't overindulge. That's what it's getting at with that one. That's what I take away. Let me know what you think. Um, let's see. Yeah, slow down, don't overindulge. Uh, third verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 12. I have the right to do anything. You say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You ever just think that you need to eat just to eat or that, you know, kind of food dictates what you, your kind of your life and what you're doing? Shouldn't be the case. You are the, <laughs> the driver of this ship. You know, God's helping you navigate. You're piloting it, piloting it, though. Okay? These foods that are all around you, you have the choice in whether or not you're going to go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac or prep your own food and you have yeah, that chicken and salad and, uh, you know, potato or whatever we talked about earlier. Okay? You have that choice. No foods are off limit. You can eat whatever you want to. But be mindful. Actions have consequences. Don't overdo it, right? Same kind of deal. Um, it's not good for your physical health. It's not good for your emotional health. A lot of you, a lot of people's 
issues stem from their gut. And if your gut's all polluted and messed up because of what you're eating, your mind's gonna be messed up. A lot of serotonin's made in your gut, right? It's a kind of a happy level you out kind of hormone, right? If your serotonin's all messed up, you're wondering why you got issues. There's a reason the ancient Greeks thought that your brain or part of your brain was in your stomach because they knew there was a correlation there. We've talked about it before. <laughs> Number four, Ecclesiastes 3.13, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all is their toil. This is the gift of God. <laughs> find satisfaction in, in your toil, right? You, you earn it, you, you work hard, you get food, you can indulge once in a while, but again, don't overdo it. If you wanna have a piece of cake to celebrate so your, you know, your kid's birthday party, awesome, okay? Don't do it every night. If you like pizza, I love pizza. Just don't eat it every night. All these, these things, you can do these things in, in moderation, but you don't need to be going to, you know, the McDonald's every day for lunch. You don't need to be going uh, to the bar every night and, and drinking, drinking beers. Like you don't need to have a little, a little candy bar in your, in your back pocket as your snack every day at, you know, one o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon for that little pick me up. These things add up over time. And if you're not active, that's going to compound the situation because now how are you burning that stuff off? It's converting the wrong way. Okay. Finally, um, oh, and on, on that note too, right? Um, some of these things that you eat, they're really just not satisfying at all. It's empty calories. Some, sometimes the candy bar, sometimes the, uh, the beers or the soda or anything like that. You might feel good for a second, but then like a little while later, like, man, I could go for another one because it's not feeling, feeling. All right. Enjoy the things, but understand that sometimes that's, what's why we don't eat them all the time because they, they, you, you have to have so many of them to actually get full. Now you feel like doo-doo and you're, you're, you're out of luck, right? Finally, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. You can apply this to many situations in life, but as it applies to food, Right now, <clears throat> you've got cravings. Replace craving with temptation, okay? I am craving ice cream right now. Do you really need it? Do you really need it? Is it gonna go back, is it gonna honor the Lord, and everything like that? Maybe if it's just like a, a, a no, old bite or two, but eating the whole pint, no bueno, right? Um, and then you, you also get that kind of, that temptation comes a sense of urgency. I need to fulfill this right now. You know, that's a lot. You can, you can go without it. Maybe you just need to drink a glass of water and that hunger will go away. Maybe you just need, maybe you just need something in place of that, you know, cupcake or cookie or whatever it is. Maybe you need celery and carrots. Maybe you just need to munch on something. I don't know. But you're never going to be tempted to the point where you can't overcome it. And then when it comes to food, it's, that's, that's an easy one. That's an easy temptation to get around, okay? Sometimes you may just, be, you just have to be disciplined enough to be like, I'm just not gonna eat. It just is what it is. You're gonna be all right. It seems like there was a lot we just covered, but it is very important to understand that you really are what you eat. <laughs> there was an episode of the Magic School Bus way back in the day where what was the kid's name Arthur and he was eating these little fish snacks and they were like green but he would he ate them and ate them ate them throughout the whole episode next thing you know he was orange his whole body was orange it turns out those little green things it was like like carrot snacks or something and he turned orange and everybody's like what happened it's because he had a lot of beta carotene in him or something like that so he literally became high he is what he I don't know why that popped in my head but that's that's kind of the whole theme of the episode he overdid it right <laughs> don't be like Arthur don't overdo it on these things or you'll end up turning orange like he did <laughs> Just, he, probably not I, I've, I've yet to turn into a peanut butter jelly sandwich though not for lack of trying but as you get older you have to be cognizant of what you're putting in your system because 
I'm 35. I'm not 18 anymore. I can't just house a whole sleeve of Oreo, of double stuffed Oreos and think that's going to, you know, get me through my day. Ain't going to happen. Should have been doing it back then. And, you know, just, it, that just shouldn't have. Let's put it that way. None of you guys should be doing that either. Find better things to put in your body, better fuel for your body. That way you can, you can power up, level up again, get to the level of performance that you want to be at. You'll be able to sleep right. You'll be able to digest your food and you'll be in an overall better mood while preventing disease and then extending and prolonging your life. That's what this whole thing is about. You are what you eat. So you are either very, you're very poor, or you're very rich in, in your eating habits. <clears throat> if you know somebody who's having trouble, you know, this whole thing we got going on now with body positivity, that's probably one of the most cruel things I've ever heard of in my entire life. Because if you really love someone and they're, overweight you shouldn't encourage them to continue to be overweight just because you don't want to hurt their feelings oh you're beautiful and blah 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 yes maybe they are a nice person maybe are they are a very beautiful person on the inside but if you want that beautiful person on the inside to be around with you for a very very long time you have to help them get in a healthier lifestyle so that they can be around for a long time there's a lot of really awesome people out there who are who are a little bit heavier i want them to be around for a long time because they're funny they're kind, you know what I mean? All, all these different things uh, that we that we love about them. It's not that I that we hate them because they're fat. That's not what we're saying. We want to generally help you. That's what love is. Love is telling somebody who might be a little bit on the heavier side, hey, we should. Let's, how can we help you stick around longer? Because I like you. Do you want to go for a run? You want to go for a walk? You want to go to the gym? Something like that. That should not be an offensive thing to do. You, so nobody should take offense to the fact that you love them and care for them enough that you want to spend more time with them and have them around longer. Does that make sense? But this whole my 600 pound life or or what, whatever the chick is who thinks she's the beauty standard, the, the singer um, Lizzo, Lizzo, right? Not a beauty standard. Maybe she can sing. I don't know. I don't even know that much about her. I just know she's not the beauty standard. And it's just, it's because she could probably be a really pretty lady. Maybe she's nice on the inside, I don't know, but let's help her lose some weight. Let's sign a petition. Lizzo, let's help you lose a little weight because if you are this talented, let's keep you around for a lot longer. Otherwise, you're gonna die of a heart attack. That simple, all right? It's not that we hate people. It's we want them to be better and be the best versions of themselves. If they choose not to, that's on them. But if you have the opportunity, you have the ability to help them out, Give them advice, give them the tools to succeed. Why not make it happen? Help them not to be, you, you, you are what you eat. Don't let them be something bad because of their eating habits. Okay, let's help people be the best they can be. Hoorah. Guys, that's all I got. That's all I got for this week. You are what you eat. Um, I think there's a lot of takeaways from that. You guys let me know what you think. If there's anything you would add to this, man, my hair is all over the place. If there's anything you guys would want to add to that list, anything you want to talk about further, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of other podcasts and things. A lot of people in much better shape than me that will give you better, probably better advice. Uh, but this is just a little something, something to help you kind of get your mind in the right direction. Being more cognizant. The biggest thing is not to overindulge it. And if you have a serious fitness goal, serious weight loss goal, then you should be paying attention to what you're putting in your body. It should be a lot of water should be not a lot of energy drinks and caffeine get those natural energy levels up that's that's the end game the end goal all right but if you're just kind of maintaining and stuff like that enjoy it have a good time but if you're trying again trying to lose a lot of weight pay attention to what you're eating and all things for the glory to most high god all right we're gonna end with a quick word of prayer as always guys i really appreciate you tuning in again from the bottom of my heart thank you very much share this episode with the uh with the world share the show that's how we grow so that's my little <laughs> catchphrase right now um that is that is truly how this this show has taken off we've got a lot of last week got a got a ton of listens um within like the first couple of days and i attribute that to you guys putting it out there sharing it with your friends i try to get a little video clip if i can and put it on on Instagram and YouTube, so you can kind of get a little preview of what we're talking about. But at the end of the day, I may not get to that, but by you share the links, 
follow me on Twitter, retweeting it to your followers, sharing the page on Facebook, um, or just texting a link to your friends. That's probably the best way. Hey, listen to this. This guy's got something neat to say. Or hey, listen to this. He's a dummy. Whatever. That's up to you. But <laughs> share it. I'd be, I'd be thrilled if you guys would do that. I'd be thrilled if you guys put this show on uh, as you go to sleep and listen to it all night long. Listen to all 92 episodes in your sleep. It's, it's osmosis. You'll learn something. <laughs> so, uh, again, all that from the bottom of my heart. I'm Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. Let's end this with a quick word of prayer. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. Guys, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the tools, giving us the resources, helping us to live a long, healthy life to the glory of you, Lord. And help us to continue to live a long, prosperous life and, and, and a life that is in service to you and in service to others that will help us grow closer to you and help us grow your kingdom. Help us to fill our bodies with the right things mentally, spiritually, and physically, that we can be the strongest people we possibly can and be an example for others to follow, that your kingdom grows each and every day. Help us to bring one more person to the fold, Lord, and help that one person give them the equipment needed to bring one more person, and so on and so forth, Lord, until we have advanced your kingdoms to the darkest corners of this earth. Lord, I ask that you just bless anyone tuning into this, give them, give them peace as they go into the weekend, Give us strength each and every day and give us faith that increases each and every single day. Lord, I ask this in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. This is, ah, I just hit my elbow. Did y'all see that? <laughs> nice, dude. That's all I got for you guys this weekend. Uh, this weekend, we'll talk to you guys next week. Tobinator, out.